as we go through our life, we have many different roles and many different ways that we think of ourselves, but often we don't consciously stop to really pay attention to where we are or what we think our identity is. And especially as we get to midlife, this can change dramatically depending on what's going on in your life. Children leaving the home, changes in your family situation, changes in your work situation, aging family members, whatever, it becomes really difficult to know what your identity is. And as we're going to learn today, this is something that's really important to think about and then potentially to reevaluate. My guest today is Christina Smith, and she is a wonderful life coach who specializes in midlife women, helping them answer this exact question. Hey, friends, I am so excited. The calendar is here. I have been working so hard for so long to create the Preparedness Pantry calendar, and I absolutely love it. It is beautiful paper. It is hardbound metal coil binder, nice quality, thick calendar paper. And as I'm sure many of you have heard me say, I see our gathering in the kitchen table as being like pulling up a chair to with a cup of tea to sit down with friends and share and grow and support each other. So every month I have a beautiful image of a cup of tea with a lovely quote. I had so much fun picking out the quotes for you. And each month will just be something pretty to look at with a quote to have you think about and reflect on as you go through. I'm really looking forward to rediscovering them as we go through the year together. On each month, I have listed the book of the it says book of the month, but we're reading books over two months now. So all six books are listed in the calendar. I have listed when the office hours are. I also have listed things like building your preps, knowing what is the thing that you want to be focusing on this month, looking at doing things like learning how to grow microgreens, rotating your water storage. I also have things like make a pot of soup using ingredients from your preparedness pantry. There's all kinds of wellness information in here and it's all a little bit gray. So you can write over this. You can use this calendar as you would any calendar, make your notes, etc. And so here's the deal. I want you to have this beautiful calendar. I want you to have this extra step of information that will help support you as we go through the year. We have preparedness pantry office hours and holistic wellness office hours every month. They're live calls. If you attend the call, you get to ask questions. If you can't attend the call, I understand that. You get to watch the recording, so that's wonderful. I want you to have this calendar so much that for everybody who buys a copy of this calendar, if you send me a picture of you with the calendar by December 31st, so you've got a little bit of time, but not a lot of time. If you send me that picture to my email, mira at theingredientguru.com, I am going to put together a special invitation only Zoom class just for calendar purchasers. And this is going to be an ask me anything class. You are going to be able to come and ask any questions you want. Now I am going to share, I have sometimes done ask me anything classes where I've only had one or two people show up. It's like getting a private consultation and I charge $250 an hour for consultations. That would be amazing if there was only one or two of you. My hope is there will be more of you because I want you all to get the support, but I'm just letting you know that this is going to be a 90 minute, ask me anything special event only for calendar purchasers who are already a member of the kitchen table who send me their picture 
by December 31st. I hope you'll take advantage of this offer. I can't wait to have that call with you. Thanks, folks. Bye. Christina, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for that lovely introduction. I am so excited to be here and talk about this topic. And it's interesting because until we get to this point in our lives, we don't really think much about it. <laughs> True. I have to ask, how did you get here as a life coach? How did you wind up finding this as your niche? Yeah, so... I feel like I'm a cheater, really, because I think midlife is like the best life. So I think I avoided niching down to midlife because I was like, but it's such an exciting time. But I realized that other people don't see it that way, right? Because, and part of it is that we attach ourselves to specific identities. And when those phases are over, we can definitely get stuck and go, where am I now? And for example, in midlife, it's like when we let go of our children, well, if I'm not mother, like full-time mother, then who am I now? And we can get really stuck because we have defined ourselves by one identity. And along my ways of doing my personal growth work, I found an organization called Woman Within. And the founder there, Shar Tosi, she has a certificate in Carl Jung archetypes. And when I started learning about the archetypes, I was like, oh, I get it. And when I talk about archetypes, women are like, oh, I know I'm the warrior. That's my thing. And I would say 90% of my clients, that's that's the identity that they really connect to. The, the person who's getting stuff done, taking action, doing the things. And in Gen X, that's we were like bred into that. Like we were told mm. you have to work really hard. You have the American dream, all of that. But it all happens if we just work really hard. And so in this culture, the warrior is honored the most. That's what we are given as it's rewarded the most, right? That productive part of us. But what I learned by, and I used to be like, yes, I'm a fierce warrior. And I was <laughs> a fierce warrior. However, when I started learning about more of the archetypes and more of these other identities, most of our fe feminine archetypes are all torn down by our society, but they all have value. And that's why I think that this is exciting life because in the midlife, because we're moving into that crone stage where it's not about how much we can accomplish in a day. It's really about how wise we've become over our experience, how we tune into our own inner wisdom and are able to decide what are all the identities that I want. Maybe I need a better balance of identities. Maybe I need to revisit some of the old identities, like my inner child. Before we started recording, I told you that tonight we're going to the fair. And that's because today I have been in my queen energy all day, talking on podcasts and <clears throat> being really present and seeing big picture and all of that stuff. But to too much of one energy for me, even if it's warrior, can exhaust me. Mm. So I get to go, okay, what is the energy that I need now? I need some fun. This was <laughs> a very, <laughs> and I love talking on podcasts. Doesn't mean that it's like hard stuff, but it's a different energy. I'm going to, I'm going to approach podcasts in a different energy than I am to go to a fair or the state fair or whatever. I'm going to need a different energy. So this identity that we have, it can transform. It doesn't mean that we ever become one thing. I don't think that that's good for us, but it means that we get to explore beyond the thing that we're rewarded for. And I think midlife is the perfect time to do that, to start, do I really want to be a warrior? I know externally I might be validated that way, or externally I might be rewarded that way. What do I actually feel inside? What do I actually want inside? And this is a big question for us because I think I didn't even know that there was so many different archetypal energies within me that I could actually choose from. So this giving up identity is giving up 
our singular focus of being mom or being warrior or and, being. And I, yeah. And I was going to say, I love that you say that because one of the things that I see for so many people as young women, as little girls, and then young women, we're pushed into this, oh, you have to be this. And anybody who doesn't fall into that is somehow what's wrong with them. And if we embrace that, which many of us do, and we find deep fulfillment in it, the challenge becomes once that's over, what's left? Because we get so invested in this because we've spent decades being trained to be this one thing. And I love that you say there's so many different aspects, so many different pieces and parts of identity that we can claim. Can you share what some, of, I know you've already shared a couple of them, but can you share what some of the other archetypes are? Oh, yeah, I definitely. Well, I just wanted to point out one thing that you were just talking about, which is, wow, there goes my midlife brain. It just slips right out. <laughs> but there is this bit of us that how do we recognize that we might need a different energy? In my warrior state, I was getting real angry and resentful towards people who weren't working 60 hours a week, who were complaining, even though they didn't seem to get as much done. Or I was taught to work really hard, not socialize. So when I would see people at the water cooler having conversations instead of at their desk, getting their stuff done, right? I would get resentful. But I, I want us to ex explore that resentment because what that is, is, I'm judging that you're doing something I don't allow myself to do. Mm, wow. So I'm getting mad at that. And there's nothing wrong with people talking at the water cooler. We need those connections and that communication in order to be a good team, in order to be a company together, right? We need those things. But because I was such in a warrior brain, one of our other archetypes is lover. Now, my husband is like 90% lover. That is his default every time where my default is to go into warrior mode. And my warrior could look at that lover like, what a flake. Because the lover is all about connection and being present and all the, I call them flowers in my emails. Because my warrior writes an email and goes, here's the information. Here's what I need, blah, 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 blah. And that's it. Yeah. And some people think that's way too direct and they get offended by me not putting in the, hi, how are you? How's it been? How's the family? They need all that flower in there. That's a lover energy. The one that really wants to connect with people and be in community. And they love the beautiful things and they like to indulge themselves. And there's nothing wrong with it. The only thing that was wrong with it in my brain was that I was not trained that way. Mm -hmm. Right. I was not trained that uh, I had a much different family life than my husband. <laughs> I had a lot of trauma and it, it was just is dysfunctional let's say and and he grew up in a home where he always knew he was safe and loved all the time there was like never could do a thing wrong he was the oldest son he was the blue-eyed son right that's who he was so we grew up very differently where his lover was rewarded a lot more than mine was. In fact, in my house, the lover archetype could not exist um, because it would have been torn up by other warriors in my house. Um, and so that, yeah, there are lots of different energies and we can talk about some of them. <clears throat> we have our childlike energy. It never goes away. It never will go away. That child wants to learn. If you ever noticed a child can learn to tie their shoes and they have to do it like 400 times, but they don't stop. They just keep doing it because when children learn, they don't have an expectation of success every time. They're exploring, they're curious about the process. So that childlike energy is not only playful and creative, but also important for our learning um, and changing. If we're going to try anything new, we almost have to get into that childlike energy again so we can get curious rather than judgmental about ourselves. 
we have our beautiful adolescent energy. So when we've, I saw this beautiful meme the other day that said, when we've healed our wounded child, watch out for the teenager because she's angry. <laughs> <laughs> And the teenager is, the adolescent is phenomenal. Her job is transition. A lot of people called menopause in the midlife our second adolescence because there's so much change happening in our bodies, in our brains, in our emotional structure. Our adolescence is all about being okay with being uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but every time I think about my adolescence, I start sweating in my pits and on the back of my neck. It's just so uncomfortable. And the other thing about that, though, that I find really interesting, because I have noticed, I'm very fortunate, my parents are still alive, they're young and vibrant, and then there's me, and then I have children, and now I'm working on grandchildren, the generational expectations of those different life stages is very different. And so I see like I'm in a position where I can see some of the things perhaps that might have been expected of a certain life stage for my parents that is completely not Mm -hmm. an issue for my children. And it's astonishing because we get stuck in this, no, this is the way it has to be. And it yeah, really that's what's so beautiful about the archetypes is it goes generational. If I told you about a child energy a day, they would recognize that 400 years ago. It may look different, what they play with, how they play, technology, all of that stuff might look different, but the energy behind it is the same. Mm. Even though it looks different generation to generation, if I told you about adolescence energy, I promise you 60 people in the room would be like, oh God, (laughs) wouldn't (laughs) want to do that again, right? (laughs) Because it was challenging and it was uncomfortable. And of course, it's going to look very different from country to country, but most people are going to understand that. When I say warrior energy, everybody knows what that is, right? Buck up, get your steel armor on and let's just go do the dang thing. So all of these energies are actually quite universal. Again, they may look different. Our parents, different generations might want our adolescent to act differently or show up differently, but the actual general energy of it, very typical of any adolescent is that it's uncomfortable. There's a lot of challenges. We're learning how to be social adults. Mm -hmm. That's our stage of learning how we build a relationship and how we don't. Um, And our justice fighter, do we ever notice that teenagers are like, well, if something's wrong in the world, we should change it. The environment's wrong. We have teenage advocates for the environment because when we're young, if we see something that's wrong, we think, why can't that just be changed, right? Now, as we get older, we realize there's systems and organizations and red tape and laws that kind of limit our ability just to be like, let's just change it. (laughs) (laughs) The adolescent is a justice fighter and she wants things to be right. Um, And if we talk about mother energy, we all know what that's right? That's like that nurturing, that's that healing, that's that birthing of things. You don't have to have children to have a mother energy. You might be birthing businesses. You might be birthing creativity, projects, books, who knows, but it's anything that we bring from idea to fruition. That is our mother energy. And then we nurture it, we teach, we heal. So we do know these energies, right? They're very universal. Now, how we mother, (laughs) much different in the 80s, the how I raised my children, right? How I was raised was much different. But that was the sign of the cultural times. Mother energy in our culture, most of the feminine energies in our culture are not valued as much as the warrior, right? The sovereign. These are ones that power and money in action Those are the ones that our culture has deemed important, which is why I think it's so important for women to really dive into feminine archetypes, because it brings that feminine side back to us. I just talked to a woman on my podcast that was telling me that 
the most important time to balance your masculine and feminine energies is during menopause because just being in that warrior so often can change our hormonal levels and it can really mess with it where we need a lot more balance and that balance is slowing down the masculine is very like push push let me make this happen the feminine is let me sit here and i'm going to receive whatever is for me and it's so it's- Yeah, it's so interesting that you should say that. And how you mentioned how so many women are like, yes, I'm the warrior. I'm getting it done. Like, tiger mom, go. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's fascinating to me hearing what you're saying, because we are on this, this cultural push towards that warrior mentality and the answer to how are you is busy, not really like, how are you? And Mm -hmm. so how do we get to a point where we can explore these other identities or really find that space to stop for a minute and go, is this really me? Or is this just a story I'm telling myself? Yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. Like how that's the biggest permission. I, I still have challenges giving myself is can we slow down? Can we just take a breath? Can we hold on? Let me go internally. Because our culture is very much practical and logical. It should all make sense. And I am a very practical, logical person. It's one of the things I'm really great at, finding that practical answer. But that practical answer isn't always right for us. And Mm -hmm. I think that's where we get it wrong. We think the most efficient, productive way is the best way to do things. Not for artists, not for people who use their creativity or their more feminine side. What's actually more valuable and what has been more valuable in my business in the last few years is really sitting in my feminine and going, hold on, do I really want to move forward with this? I know it makes business sense, but does it fit for me? Mm what does it feel like within me? And this is very close to working with the archetypes because it's about the energy that you're bringing to it. If I'm going into a business meeting, I'm going to have a much different energy than if I'm having dinner with my husband Mm -hmm. in the business meeting. I might want to bring my sovereign so I can see big picture so I can um, really to tap into vision and leadership. But if I'm at dinner with my husband, he doesn't want me to be in all tapped into vision and leadership and big picture. He wants me to be here and be present with him. Mm -hmm. So that's me being able to be present is shifting into that lover energy. And there's three stages of working with archetypes. The first one is just recognizing them, recognizing when my justice fighter internally is coming up and going, that's not fair. That's definitely my adolescent getting angry. I know when that those words come up, ooh, I know where I am. <laughs> and that's okay. And all of these energies have like a, a shadow part and a light part. So we have our golden child and our shadow child. Our shadow child might be the kind of child that wants to stay a child forever. It also might be some of us got parentified when we were young and we were in charge of household duties and other children. And so we missed out on our childhood. So that's also a shadow is I don't allow anybody else to be playful because I never got that chance. So there's good and bad to all of these, right? And I don't even like to say good and bad. There's what serves us and what doesn't serve us. (laughs) That makes a lot of sense. And I also think... One of the challenges that we have is, is learning to embrace that ability to delve into some of those other identities and to explore those. Because it it may be possible that you explore an archetype and go, yeah, no, that's really not for me. That doesn't feel like it's not for me. When I started diving in, I was like, I don't know about that bitch. I don't want to be around her. Excuse my language. But like, Mm -hmm. she seems awfully flaky and she's not doing anything productive or of worth. Mm -hmm. She's just hanging out. So there might be energies like that. But I'm guessing that at some point in your life, you're going to go, wow, I actually could use more of that lover energy. 
I actually am jealous over women who naturally are in their lover energy and mm-hmm. can connect with people so easily. And the thing about that though, is shadow always says that if I see it in you, it means that it's also in me or else I wouldn't be able to recognize it. Oh, well, yeah. that's really powerful. That's good or bad, yeah. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> that's, yeah. a tough lunch. <laughs> that's really powerful. And so what is it about midlife in Mid- particular mm-hmm. that makes it that's such so an such important a- time to be reevaluating or yeah. seeking out those different identities or identify right. or even connecting with them? Mm-hmm. I always think about Brene Brown's quote about like midlife is the time where the universe starts shaking you and go, use your, the gifts that I gave you. Mm. And I think at midlife, we just have a little bit more space. We're letting go of our kids. Maybe we're settled in our careers, or even if we're not settled, we're in more of a routine. We have our daily things figured out or some of them anyway, we may want to change some of them, but we have a little bit more space. The other thing that happens is this beautiful, magical change that our feminine bodies go through, which is menopause. And that really shakes you up, right? Like you, you start getting some one. <laughs> maybe anxiety, right? There's a lot more anxiety. There's a lot more hormones flowing around and we start questioning things like, does this work? And I think by the time we're hitting midlife, we've already spent 20 years in warrior. And we're realizing being so far into that warrior all the time is exhausting us. It's creating stress. We have health issues because of it. And we're like, wow, could there be another way to to live? For me, it was, I had checked all the beautiful boxes off my list. My mother told me when you'll be happy when you'll be happy when you get a college degree, when you have a job, when you have a house, when you have a husband, when you have kids, when you have the white picket fence, you will be happy. I checked all those things off my list and I wasn't happy. In fact, I cried on my way to work for a year before I actually listened. I think a midlife crisis is just a midlife calling that we're not answering. And That's what I was crying on the way to work because there was something calling me and it was at least telling me, Hey, your body is really ill. You're really exhausted. And, but what does a warrior want to do? Just wants to keep producing because that's where my value is. That's so that's the challenge of having one identity is that we're now using that one energy for all the different areas of our life. Mm. And it just doesn't work that way. We need balance. We need these different energies. And a lot of people go, but Christina, when I embody all those energies, what happens is I get all this inner conflict in my head. Yeah, that's there anyway. And the way that the archetypes helped me was I was able to like start pulling away those voices. Oh, the warrior wants me to work late tonight. I get that. But my other energy is telling me that I really... I want to stop early so I can go spend extra time with my son or my lover energy is telling me I really want to be in connection, intimate connection with my husband. And so we can get this inner conflict, but once we can pull away the voices and go, oh, I see. Yeah, of course the warrior wants to keep working. Uh, I'm going to be keep working for the rest of my life. Warrior, you can stand down. Yeah. And then, so who else is important? What is actually my priorities? So that I can start understanding all of that inner conflict that I'm having. I want to be really, I want to turn the other cheek for this person, right? That's what the queen would do. She would like, oh, that person just said something rude. My adolescent wants to be like, well, you know what? <laughs> 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 and yell some obscenities back at her because I'm insulted. But my queen goes, is that going to get me what I want? Mm. Is that really going to get me what I want? And that is that how I want to show up? Really? Yeah. Do I really want to show up as a petulant teenager? Probably not. I probably could just walk away. And so we have these really clear energies within ourselves. And I think that diving into them is really helpful. One of the archetypes that we just talked about in my coaching groups was the fool archetype, which is one that's not often used. I just thought I'd bring up one that's not often used. And the fool archetype 
we might go, oh, who wants to be the fool, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to be the fool. But if we think about it, back in the days of medieval kings and queens, the jester or the fool was there to entertain. It was there to lighten up the mood, right? It was also like Shakespeare could speak truth to power in a way in which power would hear them, right? So the fool doesn't mind making a little bit of a fool of themselves in order to get truth across in a very lighthearted way so that other people can hear him wow. and what he has to say. Yeah. So these are powerful energies, right? If I'm having a hard conversation with somebody who I just don't understand, the full energy might be helpful. Let me keep it light and let me see if I can figure out a way to communicate so that, that I will get more of what I want. Now, of and, course, and that's that such can. a powerful mind shift because like you said, we're yeah. used to being the fool is inconsequential and fluffy minded and all of that, but speaking truth to power. Wow. That's that's a lot. That's actually right. huge. So yeah. what is that something that, learn. yeah, what is something that you would offer as a starting place for someone wanting to figure out how uh, to really yeah. step back and look at that? I have a, yeah, I have a free course that's oh. online that I think is uh, really important. And you have the, I emailed the new link to you. So hopefully you'll have that to post around, but there's, if you go to invitingshift.com and sign in, there will be a course called the power of the archetypes, where I tell you a little bit about the archetypes, but I also have you go through a little visualization so that you can actually picture what your archetype looks like. And for some people, I, I, don't, I know some people get a little nervous about visualizations but visualizations are just our way of shutting down the ego and going, mm. just imagine whatever it is and whatever comes up from your inner wisdom is right. If, if your crone shows up as Betty White, that's great. If she shows up as your grandmother, that's great. If she is, just shows up as sparkly energy, that's great. All of, all of the information that we come up with in our visualizations are all about inner wisdom, but there's no wrong way to do a visualization just so we're clear. And I think that they're really powerful. I, when I need my queen energy, I know what my queen looks like in my head. Some of them have shifted over time, but I can picture that queen energy. And I know as soon as I go, I'm going to put my queen energy on. Okay. I can feel my shoulders lifting, right? My head getting straighter and my neck getting taller. And because that's the energy that we want to be in. That course is really great. They're short videos. You'll be able to go through. I think there's nine archetypes that are there. I do use more of my coaching, but those are really great beginners. I believe like the queen, the sage, the crone, child, adolescent, maiden, and wild woman. Those are really important archetypes as well that we look at, do we conform or do we become our own person? And they each represent each of those. So it's, it's just, to me, it's very exciting. And the archetypes that triggered me the most at first are the ones where today I'm like, I want more of that. Mm. I want more of that. How amazing is that? To yeah. be able to move past that, that warrior and that, that strong, forceful place to get to a point where you're not only embracing but craving those other energies that's really fascinating yeah yeah because the more we get to know them we're like oh actually she's not so bad <laughs> <laughs> she's got good moments right and they all do. They all have these like golden aspects of them that I think are just so important um, for us to start exploring all the possibilities, not just the one that our culture has told us is right. And the more that I do that, the more that I sit, especially with these feminine archetypes, the more I trust myself, the more confidence I have in myself, the more I can, I I, I just feel more empowered that I'm going to show up to the situation in a better place. That if there's something going on within me, I can 
start pulling all those voices apart. And I think that's really important. And it gives us somewhere to go. If you've been a warrior your whole life and you're ready to retire, or you're just ready to stop doing the 70 hour work weeks, great. Go explore other archetypes. Go see how you can dive into their energies because there is more than warrior. There's more than mother. So if we're empty nesting right now and you're like, oh my God, my life is over. That was just one phase. That was just one phase. There's so many other phases or archetypal energies that we could be really indulging ourselves in. It's just the one that we're used to that it's hard to look outside of, right? (laughs) No, that totally makes sense. Christina, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I've learned so much from you and really a lot of food for thought here. (laughs) Definitely. Mm -hmm. I will make sure that I, I know I do have your link, so I'll make sure that I put those down below. And I really appreciate your encouragement for so many people to tap into their other identities and those other energies instead of getting stuck in one place because life is not a flat road it is certainly a so much road. more to explore yeah absolutely. so much more to explore thank you so much for having me i really appreciate you sharing me with your audience absolutely and for everyone who's listening the links will be down below plus more information about christina so you can check her out and connect with her Thank you so much for watching and remember in everything you do, make today a healthy day. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Bye.